Hey everyone, Sir Owen Disney here. It is a little bit after 9 p.m. on a Friday night, and you ask yourself, Owen, why are you not watching SmackDown? I have a DVR for that. And then you ask yourself, Owen, why don't you work? And my response is, I don't work night times. Not very often, at least. And I don't work on Fridays, apparently. And then you ask yourself, Owen, don't you have anything better to do? And I'm like, no, you know what? I want to entertain you guys out there. So that's what I'm doing tonight. And I thought it would be just as of a good time as any, as ever before, to talk about Halloween Horror Nights tonight. And obviously, I'm wearing my swag here. I'm wearing my uh, shirt from uh, this year's event. So this is what fear tastes like. Of course, it's got all eight houses on the back of it. And I like the back of the shirt. I like the Universal shirts. I really do. I like the shirt for 21. I like the shirt for 22. And I like this shirt. But I don't know what this has to do with the campaign of what evil takes root. Which we thought was the setup for this year's event. Well, it was not. It was just a marketing ploy. It's gotcha. So now we, instead of... A shirt that says what evil takes root in one way or another it says so this is what fear tastes like and yes double entendre aside I don't want to have any clue whatsoever about what a seven eight nine foot monster from the netherworld tastes like I'm guessing maybe sulfur so this is what we're gonna talk about so I thought I would take this time to shoot my first video. What I'm going to do is, unlike some reviewers that talk about their overall experience at the event, and I'll do that, trust me, I'm going to do six videos talking about each night of Horror Nights I went to in great detail. And I think that's a great idea, and of course I'll end my seventh video with my overall experience from the event, Put over my friends from the event and also uh, talk about some speculation for Halloween Horror Nights 24. So, uh, got some ideas for that, but you're going to have to wait a little bit to get that video. So, um, bear with me because to throw out a little bit of housekeeping this week, obviously you're used to the fact if you're a regular pop viewer, and I'm sure most of you are, that we usually have AJ's movie reviews today. Well, AJ's birthday was Wednesday, and because AJ's birthday was Wednesday, because of every working out everybody's schedules, AJ's birthday event with his family is actually tonight. So because of that fact, not only am I shooting this video tonight, but we are getting AJ's movie reviews tomorrow, and we're going to be reviewing five films tomorrow. And you guys should be really happy for this, because for the next two weeks, and this does include tomorrow, you're going to be getting two verses both weeks. So we're going to be rolling out of October with a bang, folks. So cryptic comment for tomorrow actually is going to be king. And uh, cryptic comment for Sunday will be outer space. And next week, we actually have our cryptic comment is Daylight for Saturday. And our final verses of the month of October, our, our scary-themed verses, will be verses. So yeah, wrap your head around that. And if you want to uh, leave a comment in the bottom, you can uh, let me know what your opinion of what you think that the verses is going to be. So I try not to make it too hard, but I try not to make it too easy either. So there's always that. AJ and I will be going out of town on Sunday with my mother. We're going to be going uh, shoe shopping in Pittsburgh, so that'd be fun. Go to the Hard Rock and Cheesecake Factory and uh, go to the Tanger Outlet. It should be really fun. Of course, this Sunday is also TNA Bound for Glory, so I will be recapping Impact sometime within the next day or so. I'll probably recap it tomorrow. And then, of course, I'll do a pay-per-view recap after the show is over on Sunday night. So there's always that. Now, housekeeping out of the way, I want to talk about what you guys probably already know. Sir Owen Disney is not a horror guy. I said this up front. This is not my bag, baby. I'm, not, I'm Austin Powers. This isn't my bag. But, like I said, when I made the decision to make the idea to go back to Halloween Horror Nights, it wasn't even a thought in my mind. 
I thought that this year it would be totally different. First thing that's different this year, I had every piece of weather protection imaginable. So, in my backpack, my shrug bag that I had, my Reunion 2012 shrug bag, I had the following. I had a tiny umbrella. I had a Walt Disney World Disney Parks poncho. And I also had my mother's uh, Kmart poncho that says Becky on the side of it. But then again, it kept me nice and dry, so that's all that matters. I really don't care what that looks like. And I wore all of this if I needed to. Two, just in case I needed them, I had a pair of clean, dry socks in said pack. Why? Because, if you remember 2012 and opening night, yeah, the water was kind of up to my knees, so I didn't really want to go through that again. Three, did not wear denim shorts on this trip. Did not even bring denim shorts on this trip. I had these tan, like, khaki-style shorts. I don't know exactly what they are, but they're really comfortable. And they had a nice little waistband, drawstring gimmick. I like them. They're very comfortable, and they dry quickly. That is imperative. So if I decided I want to come back, after all the horror, pun not intended, that I went through in 2012, I thought I would submerse myself in everything. So what did I do? I did prediction videos. I did speculation videos. When they had the week-long reveal, I talked about every single house as they were revealed all the way up to the end. And I wanted to do a final speculation video, but I was not able to do it before I left for Orlando. So, because I didn't do that, you didn't get a final speculation video. So, I will do my best in the next several videos, and I'll, I'll explain what I mean by that in a second, to tell you what my mindset was going through the event. Now, first off, number one, the first thing right off the top is this. If I decided to go back to Halloween Horror Nights, I would only go two nights. I would go on the 20th, and I would probably be going back on the 20th... Let me get the date so I make sure I don't get it wrong. The 20th and the 27th. 8th? Sorry, I said 28th. The 20th and the 28th. See, there's a reason for that. No, I, I said it right, 27th, sorry. The reason for that is for this. The reason I was only going to go the 20th and the 27th was because they were annual pass holder nights. What an annual pass holder night is, if you're not aware, and if you're watching this video, you're probably aware, but I'm going to let everyone know for the uninitiated. An annual pass holder event night is as follows. If you are an annual pass holder, power, preferred, or premier, you are allowed in the event at 5 p.m. And three houses are open before the general public really gets in the park. So, in this case, you have the parade building and the two sprung tents, which in this case was the Walking Dead No Safe Haven, Urban Legends La Llorona, and Afterlife's Death's Vengeance. Basically, Walking Dead opened at 5, La Llorona opened at 5, Afterlife's Death Defendants opened at 545. That way you can knock out those three houses, plus get premium seating for the first showing of Bill and Ted if you're an annual pass holder. Otherwise, you have two options. Either A, you get to the event and you fight the crowds, and obviously the metal detectors, and getting the event after 6 p.m., but the other option is, it's called Stay and Scream. If you're still in the park by 5 o'clock, you can buy a ticket in order to stay and scream. That's exactly what it is. Basically pay X amount of dollars and you can stay for the Halloween Horror Nights event. Or if you're an AP like I am, you could go to one of two holding spots. Either by Woody Woodpecker's Kid Zone or by Finnegan's. And you can wait until everything allows you to go in. Because obviously the park closes at 5 o'clock. So everything can be got ready and then they reopen it to the public about 6.30. So that's pretty much how it works there. 
So that was my idea. And I had this idea, and I was like, you know, I'm just going to go twice. That's fine. Go two nights. Then, if you guys don't remember, the reason that pop exists is because of three people. Now, obviously the reason that pop exists is because of Tim and Jen Tracker. Obviously, the Tim Tracker and the Jen Tracker are pretty much my focal point of why this channel exists. And the other person I want to thank is the famous Dr. Jimmy, James Walker. I want to thank Dr. Jimmy for that as well. Now, I ran into Dr. Jimmy at Bill and Ted last year, and everyone was soaked to the bone from the horrendous torrential downpour, and that's, that's being generous. So, it wasn't very there, but obviously, when I run into Dr. Jimmy, I'll, I'll fast forward a little bit, I'll do a little memento. I'll fast forward a little bit in a couple days. I When I ran into Dr. Jimmy this year, he was cordial, he was like, Mr. Owen Disney, how's it going? I was like, just fine, Dr. Jimmy, how about yourself? So we had a nice little conversation, that was cool. And I ran into Dr. Jimmy a couple times during the event, but we'll talk about that later. So, Tim went to put together an unofficial YouTube meetup. So all the various YouTube channels that are themed pretty much towards like Halloween Horror Nights and from the Orlando area would be allowed to go. Now, the caveat is there's only 30 people, and he took the first 30 people. <coughs> Excuse me. Obviously, strangely enough, I am the only non-official Orlando resident that actually went to this event. As far as I know, I'm pretty sure that's right. I might be wrong. At least, I'm the only non-official Floridian that went to this event. That's it. Yeah, because obviously there's a couple of them that are not from Orlando. They're for, still from Florida. So... When this was announced, I'm like, okay, it looks like I'm going to be spending my birthday with Tim and Jen at Halloween Horror Nights. So I was like, okay, that sounds good. So, gauntlet was thrown down, and I found out this wonderful, wonderful ticket called a Rush of Fear Pass. And this wonderful, wonderful ticket was able to get me into every event night for the first three weeks of the event. Which means the only thing I really would be missing would be a couple of days on the third week. Because obviously I was down for two weeks. So I would be allowed to go to six event days that I was there. And I wasn't going to do that. But I mean, that's what I could have done. Well, we'll see what if I do that later on. And you'll understand what I mean very soon. So, got my speculation videos. Got ready. Found out Tim and Jen are throwing this awesome YouTube meetup. And then it was announced that they're going to cut it off at 30 B. Because it is now being sponsored by Universal. So Tim, along with Universal, are putting together this amazing event night. And to throw the gauntlet down even further, for that night only, we were allowed to film inside the houses. So I'm like, this is going to be awesome. So I took my Disney plans for my birthday and my dining reservations, mind you. Changed everything around on the spur of the moment. And I was like, you know... I'm going to make this happen. I'm going to spend Halloween Horror Nights on my birthday for the second year in a row, but this time with the Tim Tracker. And strangely enough, if you remember back to that horror story, I did see Tim actually in line for Alice Cooper when I was waiting in line for House of Horrors. And that was the first time I've seen Tim. And I'm actually on his video for like a split second. I'm wearing my Penn and Teller shirt. Now, so that being said, the first event night, the first event night of Halloween Horror Nights 2013 was September 20th. This night was a Friday, and I was worried tremendously about how the weather was going to be. Well, my worry was all for nothing because we had clear skies and sunny days all night long. Now, just because my memory sometimes comes and goes, if you haven't noticed... I wanted to give a chronicling of my day, and I actually, thanks to Foursquare, I have it time-stamped. So we're going to talk about that, and we're going to talk about my first day at Halloween Horror Nights. All right. So I get to the I get to the building. Get to the building. Wow, this this independent wrestling all over again. I'm used to saying that. 
Get over to City Walk's bag check about 8.17. I finally get into the studios about 8.34. I start my day there. Now, this is the first time I've been to Universal since December of last year. So obviously, I got a couple things I need to do. I need to hit up Springfield. I need to go to Kane Kodos. And I need to ride the Transformers, among other things. So that's my pretty much my first goal. So I enter the studios at 8.34. I go straight to Men in Black. Don't know why. I just went straight to Men in Black. Went straight to Men in Black, 9.35, ride Men in Black, okay? Finally get to Kang and Kodos. And I love Kang and Kodos. Kang and Kodos is awesome. It's a spinner kind of like Dumbo, but they got this added gimmick where they have sensors in your vehicle. And basically, there are targets of different Simpsons characters on high, medium, and low levels. And you have to go past those targets and make them spin. So that's where the twirl and hurl line comes in. It's really funny, uh, very entertaining, especially for a Simpsons mark. And even if you're not, it's still entertaining. It's like, we have taken over and there is no escape. And it was, it's just really funny and just, it's really entertaining. I like the ride a lot. I still haven't figured out how to do it yet, but I like the ride. So I get to Transformers and I'm... I made a promise to you guys that I was going to film Transformers. So what did I do? The first ride of riding Transformers? No, I didn't sit back and enjoy myself. Nope. What I did was I took this very iPhone 5 that I'm shooting this video on. And what did I do? I shot you guys a Transformers ride through just like I said I would. And it was uploaded uh, later in that day, I believe. So that's up on the channel. And then I went to Islands of Adventure. And I went to Cafe 4 so I could charge my devices. They were kind of dead at the time. And obviously, I forgot the wonderful Anchor portable battery that my mom got me. So I had to set and charge like a vagrant at the side of the wall, drinking free ice water. That's just how it works sometimes. So I get into Universal at 2.52. And the AP event begins at 4.27. And just like last year... The first place I go is the Parade Building. That's right. I go to my first house at Halloween Horror Nights 23 is the Walking Dead No Safe Haven. And once again, the Crouch is included just like it was in House of Horrors. The Crouch is awesome this time around because when you crouch down, you actually have walkers on opposite sides of you like trying to rattle your cage, literally. And that's awesome. Now, another thing. I don't watch The Walking Dead. I never have watched The Walking Dead. And judging on AJ's opinion, which pretty much mirrors my own most of the time, I'm probably not going to watch The Walking Dead. As a matter of fact, because of Halloween Horror Nights, again, I'm going to memento this again. I would say that I never want to hear The Walking Dead theme music ever again. So, yeah. And if this was a Will video, I'd probably be playing The Walking Dead theme music driving me insane. But that's that's how it works. So, I like the house. I like the house a lot. My first house. And I'm the type of guy that I like to just drink in the ambiance and just enjoy myself. I don't go... I know this is probably the complete, total opposite of all of you. But I'm not going there to get scared. I'm going there to watch people get scared and enjoy the... After Effects. So, Walking Dead was a fun house. Very enjoyable. Um, from what I saw of pictures, the uh, the final room of the house, uh, the prison, just amazing. And a lot of uh, ode to the uh, show, obviously, on that. And I found that out later uh, when we get to the Unmasking the Horror Tour I ended up taking the next day. But I'll talk about that in a minute. So, Walking Dead, done the party. And I finish it, and I was like, okay, so Walking Dead, and if you're still able to go to Halloween Horror Nights when this video airs, which I'm pretty sure you will be, you still got a couple more weeks, as of this moment, as of October 18th, you still got a couple more weeks to go to Horror Nights until November 2nd is when it closes this year. If you get at Walking Dead, I'll, be, I'll basically lay it out for you. The Halloween Horror Nights, the way it's set up is basically everything leads to something else. So, if you go to Kid Zone, on your left-hand side, you've got La Llorona, which takes you through the Barney queue. 
And on the right-hand side, you have The Walking Dead, which takes you through Curious George Goes to Town. And all that ends up, obviously, backstage at Universal. The parade building and the sprung tents. And so from Walking Dead, you go and it immediately lets out at the entrance of La Llorona. La Girona, which is the Urban Legends house. And I mentioned that Urban Legends is probably going to become a gimmick that Universal is going to stick with for years to come. And, full disclosure, after talking to TJ Manorino, I think that I might have been able to give them an awesome idea that hopefully we'll get over and uh, A&D will make my uh, dream come true if you watched the video from last year, if you know what I'm talking about. So, get to La Llorona, and it is the house that at one point I thought might be a mama house, and it's based off of Universal Hollywood's La Llorona, and basically it is a woman who is trying to impress a man, and by impressing the man who doesn't want children, she kills her children, and she becomes scorned for that, and then because of that, the ghosts of her children have to be found by her in order for her to move on to whatever existence she has after life. Pun not intended for the next house. We'll talk about that in a minute. It's a creepy, creepy house. Um, a lot of water effects in the house. I didn't really get, I didn't get any water effects on opening night. I really didn't. It's pretty freaky. A lot of, uh, awesome, like, mirror with the children and, like, going opposite directions, not knowing where you're going. And it was just seeing the different ways that she comes out at you in the house. See, basically, she starts off normal, and as she progresses and she delves further and further into madness, basically, she becomes different, and her human form is completely gone by the time the house is over. And, yeah, it's a really cool house, very enjoyable house. I very much enjoyed it. So... That wasn't bad, actually, and uh, that got out about 5.31, that's when I got into the house. So, we walked into the house that I was extremely anticipating, and that would be the other sprung tent, which is located after La Llorona, which lets you out around Men in Black, and then you enter into Afterlife's Death's Vengeance. And hearing the... Uh, <laughs> It's funny, hearing the uh, opening loop of uh, Sunset Boulevard at Hollywood Studios made me know that this was going to be awesome. And of course, this is the house that's based upon Cary, Ohio. And of course, you had the Cary, Ohio police car outside the house. And you had all the newspaper articles talking about Robert the Blade Galetta. And of course, you had the team members handing you 3D glasses. Once again, full disclosure... I did not wear the 3D glasses on opening night. I didn't wear the 3D glasses in Penn and Teller either, so there you go. Freaky, freaky house. You get in the house, and we start with the execution of Bobby the Blade, and pretty much when he dies, his victims are all pretty much coming back to him in the afterlife to make his afterlife the living nightmare that he made their regular life, if that makes any sense. Really freaky house, uh, a lot of disorientation in the house, a lot of uh, awesome black lights in the house. Uh, the Christmas tree lights from uh, Penn & Teller are back, and it's really freaky because there's things above you, there's things to the sides of you, a lot of odes to uh, the in-between, actually. Uh, there's some several creatures in the in-between that come out in this house. I really wanted to like this house. I did like this house the first night. A lot of good scares. Of course, the vortex tunnel is how we end the house. Ends kind of abruptly, though. That's the only problem I really have with it on opening night. So, after Afterlife, I'm already out at Men in Black, and I was like, you know, what am I going to do? I'm going to go over to Moe's, and I'm going to have me a Flaming Mo. So, I walked over to, flaming, to get me a Flaming Mo, and sure enough, I got one. And, I mean, full disclosure, what it is, Universal is not going to tell you this, but basically, a Flaming Mo is... I have the cup. It's actually in the other room. I don't... Really, I should have got it for you. I should probably get it for you in one of these videos. And I'll show you some of my uh, Universal swag, other than my, just my shirt. I mean, my, my AP dog tag and my Russia Fear Pass and show you all the cool stuff I got from Halloween Horror Nights this year. And that I didn't get from Halloween Horror Nights this year, but I'm working on that. So, uh, that's what eBay's for, folks. So, basically, I... 
have this flaming mo. I sit down and have a flaming mo. A flaming mo for the uninitiated is a Fanta orange soda, and it is poured into a glass which has a false bottom on it, and they pour well. They put dry ice in it, and the dry ice creates this steam. And it smokes kind of like it's a bubbling cauldron from, like, a 50s monster movie. And you drink the concoction, and it's amazing. It's just orange soda, folks. I know. I get that. But I love orange soda. And everyone knows that. Who loves orange soda? Suro and Disney loves orange soda. That's how it works. Forget you, Kel. No offense. But Suro and loves orange soda. Not you. So, anyway, I have my flaming moment. I was like, okay, let's proceed. So... I proceed over to Fear Factor Live because it's time for Bill and Ted. And obviously Bill and Ted was one of the high points of last year's event. And you know what? I might as well just tell you right now, I'm going to totally uh, minorly spoil Bill and Ted for you this year. So the setup this year is basically takes place at Camp Morningwood. And the opening set up for Bill and Ted this year after the really awesome uh, cute uh, the really awesome video that opens it and I'm not just talking about the uh, jackass style stunts and uh, fail moments that's done to different music I did like the fact that they used uh, Will Smith and the the wow if it was was Will Smith he was the he was the fresh prince back there DJ Jazzy Jeff and the Fresh Prince's uh, Nightmare on My Street, which made total sense. That's actually the last song before we ended up into the f opening video, which is a uh, rib on the uh, AT&T commercials where the guy is talking to children. And he's pretty much putting over the fact that what you're going to see is kind of offensive. So if you're offended, you need to leave. No cell phones. Everything in general, of course. We start off with the opening of Bill and Ted, which is a really awesome setup. Like I said, we show up at Camp Morningwood, which is not announced yet, and there is a camper that comes out. Then all of a sudden, you see Jason Voorhees coming out, but it's not Jason Voorhees. It is a very attractive woman in a Jason mask, dressed like Jason, and you have a girl dressed like Freddy, and a girl dressed like uh, Carrie, and a girl dressed like Chucky, and a girl dressed like Michael, which is... That's, I don't, I don't know exactly who all they were trying to uh, portray, but um, a lot of horror icons. They do this really awesome uh, dance opener to the Phoenix by uh, Fall Out Boy. So that was really awesome. And um, we end up with the, first, the episode of Bill. This time, Bill and Ted is basically all centered around... The beginning of it is Lisa's Evil Dead. And Bill and Ted's mission this time around is to stop evil Taylor Swift from taking over the world by possessing different pop culture girls to do her bidding for her. And, of course, we see all sorts of different characters in Bill and & Ted. And uh, a lot of really funny jokes in Bill & Ted. Bill & Ted is spot on this year, but I'll talk more about Bill & Ted later on. So Bill & Ted is awesome, and I get to see the very gorgeous uh, curly-haired blonde girl that I uh, very much liked from uh, last year's Bill and & Ted, and she is in the, uh, the number this year, so that was awesome. So, Bill and Ted's over, and you know what? It's time for an American Werewolf in London. Now, this was my most anticipated house of the year. Why? Because right before I left, AJ showed the movie to me for the first time. And to say this house was spot on does not do it justice. The scares, they're very, like, spread out among the house, but the movie, it's just like you're walking right in the movie. Just like with Cabin in the Woods and Evil Dead uh, on the second night. We'll talk about them later. I'll talk about them when I talk about uh, my birthday. But we have this, and this setup is amazing. And, of course, you get the blue moon, and you hear blue moon, and you see the werewolf numerous times in the house. We get to see everything in the house. You get to see the slaughtered lamb as the facade. And you walk in, you see the pentagram on the wall, you see the dartboard, you hear the audio from the movie, you made me miss. And you walk through the moors, and you see everything. Everything is there. You see Jack get attacked, 
And then you see David in the hospital room. You see the Nazi werewolves. You see the attack in the house. See you next Wednesday at Piccadilly Circus. And for all of those Doctor Who fans out there, thanks to Mike Aiello, we got ourselves a TARDIS inside that uh, house at the very end. So really awesome house, best house of the year, but I'll talk about that in depth later on. So after American Werewolf in London, about an hour later, it was time for Rocky Horror. And you know, I was really excited when I found out that the Rocky Horror Tribute Show was coming back to Universal for Halloween Horror Nights 23. Why? Because I'm a big Rocky Horror fan, and I really wanted to see this in person. I had watched a lot of the YouTube videos that they have posted, and there's not many, but there's a few, and I was really excited about this. And spot on, I'll give it up to most of the crowd, they knew the callbacks, even though as now we have, the callbacks are kind of uh, minimal compared to what they used to be, because Universal apparently has cracked down now that... I've long left the event. Everybody was great. I did say before that I thought Riff Raff's a little too Broadway. But you know what? Now I think about it, everybody was spot on. All the songs were great. Frank and Furter was amazing. Uh, Brad and Janet were awesome. I, uh, obviously, I love Columbia. And uh, Magenta was great. I uh, just, very enjoyable show. And Rocky was great too. So, I mean, everybody did a phenomenal job all the way up from beginning to end. Start to finish, Rocky Horror was amazing. So, uh, yeah, kudos to Universal for bringing it back. And hopefully, there's not too much controversy from this year to bring it back for 24. But we'll talk about that as we progress in these videos. After Rocky Horror, you know, I made a promise to Austin. I said I would go through Raccoon City. So, I did my next house as Resident Evil Escape from Raccoon City. So, like I said before, you set up the houses like this. This is pretty much how it works. If you proceed to the annual pass holder event, or if you wait at Kid Zone, here's how it works. You go to Walking Dead. Walking Dead lets you into La Llorona. La Llorona ends at the entrance to Afterlife. Afterlife is a hop, skip, and a jump away from Bill and Ted, and Bill and Ted is close to what? Havoc Derailed, which is right next to Rocky Horror. So it makes total sense you go that direction. And if you go around, you have Evil Dead, and then you have American Werewolf in London, then you have Resident Evil, then you have the Cabin in the Woods in the front of the park. So yeah, you can literally make a circle, and it's very simple to do. Not really a good idea if you're trying to uh, take your time, but I made it happen numerous times, so that's how it works. So, I went to Resident Evil, and I will say right now, I've never played one of the games, and Leon, at the beginning of the house, looks like Zac Efron, and I said it so many times, it wasn't even funny, but I'll tell you what, every single time, somebody laughed when I said it, so there you go. Comedy for one, folks, is still comedy. A lot of people give some crap to Resident Evil, say it's a, it's a crappy house, they say that it's just lives up to expectations of absolutely no one, and my response is this. Look at it as a comedy house. The fact that the nemesis kind of looks a little bit like the Toxic Avenger. The thing about the house was it was an enjoyable house that I went through numerous times, and I enjoyed the first time I went through the house. I don't... There are several times that there's nothing going on, and there's several times that there's everything in your face at once. And, you have, of course, you have Jill shooting at... Uh, excuse me, shooting at Nemesis who, of course, is shooting at you with a, uh, a gun high atop. And, of course, later on in the event, actually, he's on the ground in front of the Raccoon Police Department at the very end of the house. So, yeah, there's a lot of good odes to uh, the video game for a lot of the video game fanatics out there. Totally went over my head, but very enjoyable. I enjoyed Resident Evil, and I know I'm in the minority, but that's just how it works. So after Resident Evil, I had to go to my final house of the night, and I wanted to check out the sequel house to the Dogs of War. That's right, I went to Havoc Derailed. So I got into Havoc about 11.30. And it was my final house of the night. Havoc, okay, the cast, they seemed ambitious, but they weren't quite there. The scares really weren't there in this house many times. I'm not exactly sure if I really enjoyed the house overall. I mean, the first night, it was kind of just really spotty. And I didn't like the fact that my re my Legendary Truth gimmick didn't go through the first day. So, um, 
that's just how it works. Oh, and another thing too, I totally, uh, in, in my immersion, I wanted to get myself involved with the Legendary Truth game as well. So obviously I signed up on the internet. I'm a more fan, by the way. If you're curious, I'm sure you probably figured that out anyway. But yeah, I signed up, I played in park, and there were the little, the uh, of course, the scanners outside, and if they glow green, then it took it, and then it, I get a text message on this iPhone said that like, you have unlocked a new badge, or congratulations, Sir Owen Disney, you have survived Afterlife's Death's Vengeance. I'm like, yes, I have. So yeah, I was trying to win badges. I do need some stinking badges. So, basically, Havoc was the last house. Uh, it kind of ended on a whimper, to be totally honest. I went to the NASCAR Sports Grill because it was after midnight. And it was officially my birthday, so I was officially 32 years old. So, because of that factor, I was going to have me a little late-night snack. So, I had some chicken and fries, and I called it a night. I went off to the guest drop-off, which I'm still the mayor of on Foursquare, at a 107, and I got dropped back off at Jumbo House at 145. That was my first day at Halloween Horror Nights. So, basically, I got through six out of eight houses, did both Bill and Ted and Rocky Horror, still had time to go get a flaming mo in the middle, and bought merch as well. So, I think that just going that night, I would have got my money's worth. Because, if you really think about it, if you go to Halloween Horror Nights for one night, it's 90 Two dollars and tax. If you're an annual pass holder and you buy a Rush of Fear pass, it is sixty dollars and tax. Do the math. Going one night is better and more financially smarter to do than going one night. Obviously, if you're buying, you're not an annual pass holder. So getting a Rush of Fear pass was a no-brainer, considering the fact that I knew I was going to be going back the next day and on. The 28th. I think it's the day I've decided it's going to be now. Let me check to make sure. Good God, I keep saying the 28th. The 20... Yeah, the 28th. That was to change. But we'll talk about that in a later video. So, that was my first experience of Halloween Horror Night. So you guys can uh, follow my other days. I'm going to be talking about my birthday. My birthday includes two Unmasking the Horror Tours. When I get to go through six houses... Plus, the awesome YouTube meetup where I started my new friendship with Tim and Jen and met a lot of really awesome people. And, of course, I ended at the Hard Rock because that's how it works, folks. And, of course, we have other days as well. Maybe I decided to go more than one time. Maybe I decided to go more than two times. Maybe, just maybe, spoiler alert, I went six nights. So, we're going to talk about that and how my plans change in the next days ahead. So, a lot of stuff to talk about. So, follow these videos and uh, you'll hear about what I think about the uh, rest of the event. So, I'm going to do six videos talking about each and every night I went to Halloween Horror Nights. And on the seventh video, we're going to talk speculation for 2014. What I think may be coming in 2014 to Halloween Horror Nights 24. Things I liked, things I didn't like, and it's an overall experience review which is coming in the near future. I don't know exactly when these videos are coming, but they are coming, so stay tuned. In the meantime, if you like these videos, tell your friends about them, leave a comment, do subscribe to this channel, and uh, become a part of the way to make the Popcaster Revolution known worldwide, baby, worldwide. And if you like these videos also, you can send me an email. If you want to email me, sure, no problem. Disney at gmail.com. If you want to tweet me, you can be uh, tweet friends with me. That's cool, no problem. Very simple to find, at Disney. Or if you want to uh, go the good old-fashioned uh, Mark Zuckerberg style and go Facebook, you can friend me. It's Owen Disney. very simple to find. It's a picture of me, Tim, and Jen outside the lockers at Hollywood Rip Ride Rocket. Which, actually, I'll talk about tomorrow or the next time we do these videos. In the meantime, like I said, tomorrow we have a new Versus, which the Cryptic Common is king. We have AJ's Movie Reviews, which are going to be talking about Carrie. We're going to be talking about the Escape Plan. We're going to be talking about the Fifth Estate. Thanks for sharing and 
in a world. And of course, next week we're going to be doing Bad Grandpa, The Counselor, and Escape from Tomorrow, and all sorts of awesomeness still to come in the near future. So in the meantime, thank you guys and girls out there for watching, and until tomorrow, boys and girls, that's all I got to say about that.